And just while people are getting seated, could I just remind everybody, if you have a mobile phone, would you very kindly ensure that it is turned off? Thank you very much. And we'll just wait for another few moments as people are seated. Thank you. For God so loved our world that he gave his one and only Son, and whosoever believes in him will not be lost, but know eternal life. The steadfast love of God never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. His love is new every morning. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Firstly, may I extend both the Reverend Lee and I a very warm welcome to the family and friends of Edith Bullock. We are gathered here today in this church that Edith loved to celebrate her life and to give thanks to God for her life. It was delightful to welcome Drumra Drum into Grated College this morning and to see you in the vestry and it was such a beautiful gesture and I know the family appreciated very much the college and pupils and teachers. We know that a number of people have travelled quite a distance today from Belfast, from Dublin. We give you a welcome. But we especially give a warm welcome 
to those that are listening to this service in this very moment from Austria and Germany. We are delighted as close family and friends that you are present with us in this moment. So all of you here today in the church, in our Sunday school room, your support is so valued because it offers such comfort to all the family. Thank you. We are here to entrust Edith, greatly loved to God's eternal keeping, and to entrust ourselves to that same God that loves us so much. We sense the deep loss of the family and friends. You have been so supportive and so loving and so kind to this precious member of your family. Many people here experience and know something of that loss because they too have loved Mrs Bullock and regarded her as a precious and dear friend. So all of us stand together with your family here to offer comfort and support and to express our thanksgiving for the life of this wonderful lady. In the midst of this, we are invited to renew our faith and hope in God and to find in God the strength to which we face the future. We come to the same God that Edith came to when she responded to his love and opened her heart to his life, to her, to her, to her wonderful God. We all know that Edith was not indeed a religious person, but she was a spiritual person. And in her very heart and core and being, she had a wonderful faith in a living God. Now, just before we commence our service, we are glad that the family had an opportunity to greet many of you coming into the church. But after this service, we will pause for a while on this beautiful morning and the family again, if there's anyone would like to greet them before they finally make the journey to the graveside, we will pause to do that. It is family only at the graveside. So, the other little item that we might want to mention is that we, when we're singing, we would appreciate it if people would continue to wear their masks. You will all have received a most beautiful order of service. So dignified, so fitting for Mrs. Bullock. And this will make a very precious keepsake into the years that lie ahead. So we stand now and we sing our opening hymn, and what a beautiful hymn it is. Love divine, all loves excelling. Thank you.
Let us be seated. The Reverend Liam McKibben and I have been honoured and privileged to have known Mrs Bullock and to be playing our part in this service of celebration and thanksgiving for her life. I now invite the Reverend Leah to lead us in prayers. Thank you, Leah. Let us pray. God, our comforter, you are our refuge and strength, a helper close at hand in times of trouble. Help us today to hear your word and know your presence, that our fear may be dispelled, our loneliness eased, and our hope reawakened. May your Holy Spirit lift us above our sorrow to the peace and light of your constant love. Eternal God, in your wisdom and grace, you have given us joy through the life of Edith. We thank you for Edith and for all of our memories of her. We thank you for her love and friendship that she showed to all people, holding firmly to that Wesleyan teaching of friend of all and enemy of none. We praise you for your goodness and mercy that followed her all the days of her life and for her faithfulness in the tasks to which you called her. We thank you for her generosity and kindness, her care of those in need, and for her wisdom and passion in helping all people know the compassion of Christ through her words and actions. We praise you for your wisdom and truth that inspired and guided Edith through her life. We thank you that her learning and thinking taught and challenged those around her, guided people along the path of wisdom and brought meaning and understanding in her home, her church and in her community. We thank you that for Edith, the tribulations of this world are over and death is past. And we pray that you will bring us with her to the joy of your perfect kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, be with those who mourn, with Enid and with Erna, with Eric and Lisa, and with Andrew and Richard, May they find strength in your mighty arms. Be with the wider family connection in Austria, in Germany, as they grieve from a distance. May they find joy in the bonds of family and in the memories of time spent with Edith. Those who cannot be here, those who have travelled a distance to be here, and those from this local Fintana community. May we find comfort together as we lean on you, our powerful God. May we cast every care on you and know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We meet in this solemn moment to worship God, to give thanks for the life of our sister Edith Bullock and to commend her to God's loving and faithful care and to pray for those who mourn. In the presence of death, Christ offers us sure ground for hope and confidence and even joy because he shared our human life and death and was raised triumphant and lives forevermore. In him his people find eternal life. 
Let us now hear the words of Holy Scripture that we may find comfort in them. And the scriptures have been chosen very carefully by the family. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my fortress, my refuge, my God in whom I trust. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day. If you make the Most High God your dwelling, even the Lord then will be your refuge. Then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift up their hands for you. This is the reading of the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. God has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. 
for we know in part and we can prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain. Faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. We thank God for this, his word. Now that faith and hope and love gives way to peace, which was the core of Mrs Bullock's life. And we'll stand now and sing our next hymn on our lovely order of service, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. We meet in this moment to worship God, to celebrate the life of Edith Bullock and to mark her passing from this life into eternity and to support her family with our prayers. On behalf of the OMA and Fintana Circuit, the Reverend Lee and I would like to personally extend our deepest sympathy to Erna and Enid, to Eric and Lisa, Andrew, and Richard, and to the wider family connection in Germany and Austria. As a family, you have been so dedicated in your love and support for your mother that has sustained her, and that care was so devoted and so easily seen by everyone. 
Enid, you have been the constant support day and night to your mum. And today, may God's presence and love surround each and every one of you at this time. We come today struggling for words to express our feelings. And truth being told, this tribute will be totally inadequate. Because how can we possibly sum up the life of a wonderful lady such as Edith Bullock? We are lost for words to express gratitude for her life. With thankful hearts, we think of all that she has meant to her church and to her community. With gratitude, we recall the person Edith has been for the love and friendship, honesty, integrity, kindness and thoughtfulness, her wisdom and humility. We thank God for her faithful service in so much to her family, to her church, to Christ. Her faith, her commitment, her spiritual heart. And truly, Edith was a spiritual person. Mrs Bullock has enriched our lives and as an elderly lady has earned our love and respect. And today the loss of such a lady is deeply felt and completely genuine. We were just thinking about words to describe her and how to pay tribute to this extraordinary lady in every sense of the word. A woman empowered and liberated in her mind, life and social attributes. Completely authentic in her character and in her vibrant personality. She is loved and valued and highly respected by this entire community totally inspiring in her outlook and example, a most dignified individual, a loyal friend. Edith had an energy about her that was infectious and full of light and love and laughter and a wonderful sense of humour. And today we experience an outpouring of gratitude for her life and for her influence. Let's just take a moment to remind ourselves of this wonderful lady. Edith was born in 1924 into post-war Austria. And the context at that time was one of serious economic depression and social distress. She lived and witnessed firsthand the horror of war. However, despite the trauma of war, she flourished as an individual and went on to live a life full of gratitude and thankfulness. Her parents were comfortably well off and her home located in Vienna, Europe's city of culture. And from an early age, Edith was exposed to the arts and music and literature. Perhaps we might say the finer things of life. Her breadth of outlook increased as she travelled all over Europe. She was privileged with a good grammar education. And in the early years, she lived through those challenging times, but her mind never stopped growing. She had an intelligent, inquiring mind, and hers was one of lifelong learning. With the arrival of American and British troops in Vienna, one of Edith's neighbours took in a very handsome young soldier connected with the Allied forces, and his name was Eustace Bullock. And that was the first meeting that would eventually lead to marriage. Edith spoke excellent English. And as an experienced translator, she worked for the, social, for the soldiers and local people, ensuring clear communication. As a young adult, Edith arrived eventually here to Fintana and made a permanent home among the community that loved her and endeared themselves to her. Here she raised her family, Eric, Erna, and Enid. 
and through all the ups and downs of life and the support of her children and later Andrew and Richard, Edith remained loving, strong, independent woman who nurtured her family, who provided clear leadership and who was an excellent role model. Truly a feminist at heart. She expressed creative thinking and in many ways was totally ahead of her time. We are all aware that for many years the post office in Fintana was central to the community life and run by the Bullock family. Edith seized the opportunity to develop her own business service in providing a drapery shop that enhanced and met the needs within the community of Fintana providing many items for young families in terms of everyday living. I'm told that she had a captive audience in her customers because the social aspect of conversation and talking and listening was very much part of the service. My understanding is that Edith was most practical with her hands, knitting and crocheting always immaculate in her appearance, totally colour coordinated and beautifully dressed. I'm sure that as a lady in her 90s, she could well have given the ministers a makeover. Over the years, Edith became well known for her active membership of the Fintana community, a volunteer with the Samaritans for 17 years a member of the female version of Progress, a member of the Historical Society, a founder member of the Alliance Party, ultimately a people person. We could easily describe Edith as a bridge builder, moral coach. She took an ethical stand on the vital issues of life and cross-community was the principle at her core. I made a note in my diary one day about a little statement that she said. She said this to me, Eleanor, we must recognise that the past can offer direction for a better future. Edith Bullock was all about bringing people together, all about a sense of belonging regardless of who you were. And the Lenten lunches were an amazing example. Isn't it lovely to think that this week we would have been beginning those Lenten lunches here in Fintana. Her skill in caring, loving, respecting was always evident. Others before self. In her gift of hospitality and concern for everyone, it was evident. In her friendships. And there are many friends present here today who find in Edith a loyal friend. In her leadership, Edith invested herself, shared herself, encouraged others, wrote beautiful letters and sent lovely cards, was a loyal friend right to the end. She enriched the life of many people and we are the sadder for her loss. Last Sunday, I received a lovely phone call from the Reverend Noel Fallows and he described one Sunday while preaching here in Fintana, he experienced the most excellent of hospitality in the home of the Bullock family, a lovely meal. Of course, as a vegetarian, I'm sure there was no meat on the menu that day. But many ministers have shared with me over this last week how Edith provided some beautiful foods that we all enjoyed and consumed, homemade food that was part of the norm within the Bullock home. A welcome and hospitality of the highest standard. Edith's love of creation and the natural world was always evident. I think it's significant that the sun is shining and the birds are singing this morning as we left her home here in Fintana. The view from her conservatory out into the garden, garden, observing the wildlife, the birds, the changing seasons, the flowers and the plants, 
Not that long ago, Eric created a little pond for the birds to dip in and out of, and it brought great joy and simple pleasure to Edith's heart. Naturally. She was most concerned about our environment and climate change. As a historian, her excellent mind remained active right to the end. She was a tremendous reader, we all know that, and her mind was capable of storing any amount of information, and she loved history, finding facts and discussing various narratives that shaped society. Her attention to detail was amazing, and you dare not forget something that was mentioned at least two years ago. Faith was central to her life. She loved her church and her church family and was a theologian within her own right, very much able in the area of debate. Edith had the ability to engage critical conversation and analyse facts and search for truth. Completely articulate in her vast outlook fresh and inspiring and eternally young at heart. Her faith sustained her. A few years ago at our watch night service, she spoke at the end in such an elegant manner. And after speaking, we all clearly had the understanding that now we've had a good watch night service. The Lenten services, the harvest services, Holy Communion in her home, her daily devotions, prayer life, her faith. It was rooted in the love of God and the love of God for her. A member of Fintana Congregation shared a special moment that she remembered when Enid and a friend sang that beautiful carol, Silent Night in German. And the congregation were so touched by how beautifully Enid had prepared and Edith had trained these two young people. There was lots of fascinating conversations around theology and the Bible, wasn't there, Leah? And one particular moment I remember was the story of the prodigal son. Edith said to me one afternoon, well, she said, what do you think might have happened if the prodigal son had met the older brother before he met the father on his way home? Now that was a lively conversation. Methodist theology and ethos suited her very well following her Lutheran background. Mrs. Bullock identified with the following. Methodism as part of a worldwide church. Loving your neighbour. Social concern for others, the John and Charles Wesley way, the council of social responsibility and Christian unity, and the way of peace. Edith's heart was beginning to get deeply troubled by the crisis between Russia and Ukraine. And it would have potentially brought her great distress. Her experience of war and the need for love and peace was a core value at the centre of her life. In the end, Edith Bullock lived life well, a life full and loved, and at the heart of her life faith in a God that she loved very much and in a God that loved her. She made a spiritual commitment, a real dis disciple of Jesus Christ and with personal faith. I'm going to finish with this little quote and it's by Karl Barth, a famous Swiss theologian who had a brilliant academic mind and he produced some of the world's finest theological literature. One day this academic gentleman was asked what was the most profound academic thought that had ever crossed his mind? Barth thought for a moment and then replied, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible 
tells me so. For Edith Bullock, her life and faith simply revolved around the love of God. Knowing that God loved her, that God had made a personal sacrifice for her in Jesus Christ, and Edith simply and spiritually responded to that love, and she lived that life. What would our world be like if we all responded to God's love and lived as Edith Bullock lived, a peacemaker, a woman who desired unity, no matter what, a woman who loved community and neighbours. This was central to who she was and to her identity. May she now know the love and comfort of God, because in this moment now we celebrate that new life has begun, that the springtime of eternal life has arrived eternally for Edith Bullock. Just briefly, in a moment, her family would like to suppress, suppress, uh, express a sincere thank you to all the carers, some of them here today in this service. You who lovingly and faithfully offered care and comfort without reserve. To all the neighbours and all the kindness and compassionate gestures that have been made over this recent time and over these recent years. To all the family and friends who kept in touch in quiet and gentle ways who cared so much and loved Edith so much. From the family, they offer a sincere thank you. We said there were no words to sum up the life of Edith Bullock. And we have tried miserably to do that. But yet each of you know the story of a wonderful lady and how she invested herself and how she loved community and how she lived well and how, above all else, she held the faith and believed in a God who was loving, kind and generous and forgiving. A God who brought new hope and new life, potentially, to every heart. Amen. I'm going to invite the Reverend Leah to lead us in prayers of intercession. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Eleanor. I only arrived as a minister in Fintan Methodist Church just eight months ago, so I only had a short time to get to know Mrs Bullock. But in that short time, from times I spent in her home, and from what I've heard so many people in the community say, Edith was, as Reverend Eleanor put it, a lady full of light, love and laughter. And for me, as a young woman, starting out in ministry, I was inspired by her strength and independence, by her compassion and kindness. I was challenged by her wisdom and courage. And I was so encouraged by her deep spirituality and her very real experience of her living Jesus. When I would sit and pray with Mrs. Bullock, I would always ask if she had anything specific that she would like me to pray for her. And the answer that she would give me would never be about herself, never asking for prayers for herself, never focusing on her own trials or difficulties. But she would ask for prayer for other people many times being at a loss for what to request, realising that there was just so much in this world that she wanted to pray about. So being inspired by Edith's concern for our world and her desire to help those in need, we are now going to spend time praying, praying for other people and for our world. Let's pray together. Creator God, who in wisdom and love formed all things, 
cares for all things and sustains all things. Through your creation, we can know you. Your beauty in the flowers, your power in the wind, your refreshing in the rain, your warmth in the sun. Forgive us when we mistreat your created world. May we strive to be people who care for and protect our environment, showing love and respect to the gift of the world that you have blessed us with. Almighty God, who in love shows compassion to your children, may we be people who show that love to others. For those struggling in poverty and young families who are hungry, we ask that you would provide what they need and that we would strive to see justice done in our communities. That we would follow those words attributed to John Wesley, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Prince of Peace, who in strength and power came to reconcile all things to God. We pray for the people of Ukraine and of Russia, for the well-being and safety of those in places of battle and tension, for the leaders of nations and those who hold power, that they might work together for the good of all people. For those who are or will become displaced. And for those who offer welcome and sanctuary. We pray for peace, for justice, for dignity and love of all. May God's kingdom come. Ever-present God, who with grace sent your Son to die and rise again, an act of overwhelming love for every person. We remember all those whom we hold close and who face difficult days. For the sick, the sad, the lonely and the grieving. May you bring comfort to the family and friends of Edith and to all who mourn. May your Holy Spirit lift them above their sorrow to the peace and light of your constant love through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we say together the prayer that Jesus gave us speaking in English, in German, in the language of our heart, with deep meaning to our Father, saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, and what a beautiful hymn it is, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We stand to sing.
and grace will lead me home. Into your tender keeping and mercy loving God, we commend our sister Edith Booth. We thank you for her faith, her love, her light, her peace, her generosity. Gracious God, we pray that a lasting impression will be left with us <coughs> as we move from this church and that the memory of Edith will linger on our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. The family, when the remains leave the church, are going to just linger for a moment or two. That if anyone has not had an opportunity to greet them, that would be the time and moment to do it. Thank you. <laughs>